I'm personally, this is my most, the thing I've been looking forward to all week. Uh, I got to email Justina before and I feel very personally now connected to you. Uh, so thank you for all coming. This is the Female Quotient Authors Series uh, that we host. Uh, it's a, company, a collective between Fair Play and Female Quotient. We speak with uh, an amazing group of people who are inspiring us every day. Justina, you're one of them for me. Uh, today, I want to talk about your road because this is the Girls' Lounge or Female Quotient Host Girls' Lounge, and we often focus on entrepreneurs. So we're going to talk a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey. Um, but of course, we're also here to celebrate your most recent book. And the confession I'll make is that my friend stole it for me. So I only have the new Bohemians to show everybody. <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment. I, like, <laughs> yeah, I texted my friend who came over and she's like, oh yeah, I borrowed it. And then I was like, well, how did you really I don't have Jungalo? So your newest book <laughs> is called Jungalo Decorate Wild. There it is. There it is. <laughs> Everybody needs this book in our lives. We need uh, to, as you say, break free from the confines of convention, especially as we enter re-enter society. So that's what I would love to start with. How have you in your life as an entrepreneur, um, as somebody who brings beauty into the world, how have you broken free from the confines of convention, which is this quote I actually keep of yours on a post-it? Oh, thanks. Yeah, I think for me, um, breaking free of the confines of convention is about really knowing yourself, getting to know yourself, understanding what you want, how you want to live, how you want to be in the world, the relationships that you want to have, and then just manifesting that um, in spite of what the outside world might think or feel about that. And so, you know, my book is a design book. So in, you know, I'm talking about this specifically in this instance about the design world where there seems to be so many rules about what's cool, what you can and can't do, what's on trend, how big your rug needs to be, how long your curtains should be, um, what colors are de rigueur and what colors are garish, um, how people feel about having, how many house plants is the right amount to have. And, you know, I, I look around and when I experience spaces that I feel really light me up, that I feel are soulful and beautiful and tell stories and that sort of capture my imagination, they never follow any of those rules. And so for me, it really is about tapping into who you are and then expressing that in terms of how you want to live in your home. And so when I'm talking about breaking free of these conventions, it's really about sort of understanding just because this is what's on trend or this is because what some designer says is, is de rigueur doesn't mean that that's right for you. And it's up to you to figure out what is right for you. And so in the book, I really uh, talk about different ways to tap into your most creative self or even discover what it is that lights you up. Because I think some of us are so, um, you know, we're getting bombarded all day long with so many images and, and, and so many things of like what you should and shouldn't do um, when it comes to design, but also beyond that in, in the world at large. And so um, in this book, I really try and give people tools to figure out sort of the colors that will work for them, not because someone else is telling you that terracotta is the color of the year, um, but because it's something that makes you feel away, <laughs> a way you want to feel. <laughs> well, I thought it was so important because um, why I loved your book so much this year was because we were home a lot. And so this idea that um, the creativity can be in your home, that you uh, can make your home a space of excitement, a place that, that's non-conventional, which is uh, ironically the work I do in different ways. I talk about the home and being non-conventional and how we distribute our gender division of labor, which you and I have talked about before. Um, and you just do such a beautifully beautiful job, so much so, like I said, I have all of your books. Um, I love them all. You've literally, you know, I think you've spurned an entire, um, you know, as you know, some of the people um, I was seeing in your reviews were saying there's so many copycats and it's so unfair to you that everyone's copying you, but I guess that's the best form, they say is the best form of flattery. But I wanna just back up a little bit 
because you've built an enter, uh, enter empire. You're an entrepreneur. Uh, you have amazing brand collaborations. You have New York Times bestselling books. And so can you just tell us a little bit about your background? Was this a career you always wanted to have? Did you always know you wanted to be an entrepreneur? For any of us, and just so you know, the way this works is we're on live, but really we get most of our audience in, in recording. So for all of you out there who will write, watch this later, the, the, the younger entrepreneurs out there than maybe Gen X, my generation, uh, what can you, what, can you just tell us a little bit about your story and then uh, what maybe people coming behind you could extrapolate from that? For sure. My story is very um, windy, a windy road and a very organic road. And, and so many of the steps I've taken along the way um, have sort of pointedly brought me to where I am. However, I could have had no sort of clue of that while it was happening. So um, just to, the pithiest way to explain it is that I spent most of my 20s living in Italy and I was um, I had a little boutique there with my sister Faith, who's also a designer, and we made things and we bought used things and we revamped them and we had this little bodega where we sold beautiful old things. And um, and so I guess that was my first foray into entrepreneur, like in being an entrepreneur, because it was it was our business and we sort of bootstrapped it and and you know it was a, a two woman show, but um, ultimately there was a. Um, a real power that I got from sort of being my own boss and being able to tell my story through, through the shop, through the things that we would buy, through experiences with customers. And I just really enjoyed that experience. And um, also sort of just given my personality, I knew that the sort of standard nine to five kind of working for somebody else life was just not for me. I'm, I'm a free spirit, a bit of a vagabond. Um, and so I kind of always knew, A, I wanted to make money and B, I wanted to be my own boss. So I think I had no real other choice but to be an entrepreneur. Um, so when I got back to the States, and this is about 15 years ago now, um, I just was kind of a creative freelancer for hire. So different, especially women owned small businesses would hire me to help mm -hmm. them with their branding, with the look and feel of, um, of their different businesses. And it was varied. It would be yoga instructors or someone who had a little fashion boutique or somebody who was, um, a life coach, like there were so many different types of women who I worked with to help hone their businesses. And, and it was always sort of the creative aspects that I would help with. Little by little, um, I, I also began to do interiors just through the same clients. They would say, I love your style. Can you also help me with my house? Or can you help me with this or help me with that? And it was also around this time that I started my blog. And when I started my blog, which is Jungalo, which was Jungalo, um, I, I sort of had no real sense of, oh, I'm going to build an empire off of this blog. <laughs> that was not the, the, the sense I had. I mean, I sort of had this idea that if this thing took off, it could be something for the business. But, but at the same time, it was really just a creative outlet for me. Uh, little by little, my blog started to gain popularity. Um, and that turned into more jobs. And as my audience sort of swelled and ballooned that, I was able to parlay that into a book deal and um, just continuing to build my platform, still doing client work, brands started to reach out and everything kind of snowballed. And, and I think, you know, a, a few major choices along the way really helped to kind of cement me as an entrepreneur and, and the business itself, uh, because I think there are a lot of quote unquote influencers in different spaces who don't really make the transition from, you know, influencer to entrepreneur. Um, mm -hmm. And so for me, um, one of the things I, I've done ever since the beginning is just to make sure I was diversified. And I think working with so many small business owners, um, I just got to see so many different ways people ran and grew their businesses. And so I gleaned a lot of tips and information from working so closely with so many amazing women. And, um, and so from there I said, okay, well, it's great that I have a really large Pinterest following it's, but I'm going to make sure that, you know, this, I, I, I funnel this following to my blog so that I kind of own the audience and I'm not sort of dependent upon, you know, one social media channel to kind of support, um, my, my business. And then when Instagram came along, you know, I funneled the audience to there and I kept funneling the audience to different places to make sure I was well diversified 
And then in 2017, I um, opened my my online shop, which sort of was an overnight success. Um, Yay! <laughs> Yay. Uh, but an overnight success because I had spent the prior seven years sort of building a community of, of over 3 million people online who kind of love this wild style and was not being served by um, you know, most of the home decor shops that kind of um, offered a little bit more uh, clean, clean and modern. I'm going to use euphemisms, that, uh, basic, more basic stuff basic. than the stuff that, uh, that, that we offer. So, um, so it's been a wild ride. Well, what I love so much about that, you said something earlier that I think is really important, especially for this audience, because again, this is the female quotient. Uh, and we often, uh, the audience here are leaders. They're uh, women who are um, really uh, professional in that they, you know, work for pay. They are uh, wanting to cultivate their career. They recognize that there's bias out there. There may be different ways for women than there are for men, especially hetero, cisgender, white men. Um, and I think what you said before is really important. You said you also started out with the value of wanting to make money. And again, I think that's so important. And you've said that to me before, and I, it's always stuck with me because we, um, I have a friend who just wrote a book called Think Like a Breadwinner. And she argues that we, we're, we're not always thinking like a breadwinner. Mm -hmm. And so can we talk a little bit about that? Um, it's, sure, I love I wanna, talking about money. Yes, I wanna talk about money. <laughs> I wanna talk about your orientation as a business owner. And again, um, why was money so important to you? And why is it so important to women for us to center that and to just not say, well, yeah, I just want to be creative and then money flowed, like that you had a goal to make money. I think that's very important. Yeah, I mean, I I definitely want wanted and still want to make money. I think when we have money, we have choices and I like having choices. <laughs> um, I also think, you know, oftentimes, like when I lived in Italy for that, for that almost decade, um, my quality of life was incredible and I didn't have a ton of money, but I had this amazing life. And um, when I moved back to the States, it was very clear to me that to have an amazing life here, you have to have some money. <laughs> I mean, I was in New York when I first got back that I moved to LA. So I'm sure there are lots of places in the country where you can live on less, but in the cities where I was choosing to be, um, in order to have freedom of choice, in order to enjoy a day at the Guggenheim, in order to uh, take taxis when you're claustrophobic and don't like the subway, um, you need money. And so I just was always, um, that was always important to me. And I also never wanted to depend on a partner um, for financial security. And I think that probably has to do with the way I was raised and, and, and the family dynamic that I had growing up, but I just always had this sense of, I just want to feel secure and feel safe. And in order for me to do that, I need to have my own money. What I also love about that is I remember when I first reached out to you, because I am also a Jungalo follower, um, even though you can't really tell in this room, it doesn't look as, as beautiful as, as yours. No, um, you're just, working your style. It looks a little bit basic. Yeah, and I thought you'd be happy with my, at least I have a house plant in the back. Um, but I, you know, I, I had this feeling that um, similar to my fair play research that you also have a family, you have a daughter, you have a husband. And I had a feeling that your gender division of labor was probably allowing you to be in your full power. And um, and so I don't, I mean, not to get too personal, but I'd love to a little bit talk about your family structure. Um, not the stupid trite questions of how do you manage it all, but instead, how do you, do you have the beautiful support system to be able to be in your full power? And I think that's another message for entrepreneurial women, right? We, we're not super women. We're gonna burn out. We're going to get Hashimoto's disease. We're going to, literally burn ourselves to the ground if we don't cultivate um, the people around us to help us raise our children, um, to be partners in that, whether you're a single mother or you have a partner. And so I would love to hear a little bit about your family structure because I want to live in your family. Oh, you're welcome. Anytime. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So one of the reasons why we chose to live in LA is because we have community here. And having community is extremely important um, for my family and it does support 
uh, my career. We have uh, both like my parents and my husband's parents all live here in LA and they help tremendously um, when it comes to, um, you know, our, our daughter. So that's incredible. And, um, and my husband is, you know, he, he works in the business as well, but especially in um, Ida's when she was much, she's eight now. So uh, for the, for a long time and still now, and especially during the pandemic, Jason is um, the primary caregiver. So he, um, he's a stay at home dad. For the most part, and so, uh, yeah, he loves that, home <laughs> yeah, Jason. Yeah. Um, it wasn't Thanks. necessarily the intention when when Ida was born, but it was around that time um, that she was born that my career was really starting to take off. And um, Jason, who was a teacher and um, you know did did other very noble and wonderful things that didn't earn a lot of money. Um, you know, when I was home with Ida and not able to do my work and he was out working, we just weren't making enough money to survive. Mm -hmm. And so we basically decided to switch things up. And, um, you know, he was staying home with Ida so that I could further my career. And, you know, he supported me in that our parents and our community supported us in that. And it's a huge reason why I'm able to you know, do what I do, which involves, well, normally involves a lot of travel, um, you know, involves long hours to bring, to take anything off the ground and to be an entrepreneur, you really have to put your all into it. And so, um, you know, there is of course, striking that balance between making sure I'm present for my family and my child, but also making sure that I am able to um, step into my power and, and, you know, make my dreams happen, which I'm doing. I love it. Can you show your book again? Since again, I'm, I, I'm so, my friend literally took it from my house this week. Cause I told you, I have the new Bohemian. <laughs> so, um, so this was a, I have a few questions coming in. We have a fair play channel coming in and then uh, we have the female quotient chat. So of course, female quotient audience, if you want to put questions in the chat, I have two questions coming in. So I might as well ask you the first one, which is, um, this is from someone who's also a writer. And she says, you're so prolific. Um, can you tell me about how you write? Oh, yeah. So so your writing routines or, you know, within your, it's not, because you're diversified, I think it's even a more important question. Hmm. So I, I think what she's asking is, you know, do you have a writing ritual? Um, and how do you fit that into all the other collaborations you're doing? Yeah, I, I have had writing rituals in the past and tend to have them when I'm blogging frequently or writing a book. When I'm not, I don't. Um, but um, for me, it I, I need quiet um, or like some kind of music that doesn't have words. <laughs> so, or that doesn't have words in a language that I speak. <laughs> so um, I'll do Brazilian jazz or classical music or something like that. Um, headphones and, um, and I, and, and, and I really like to, to have really tight outlines of, of things. So for, for the book, I, I first workshop the outline. Okay, let's talk about that. Let's talk about, you know, your most recent book. So that, so yeah. uh, everybody here, you need it in your life. Well, you need all of your books in your life. Like I said, they make me happy if I'm sad, just to look in your beautiful pages. But we're talking specifically about your newest book again, Decorate Wild. And I always say when I have authors on, it really helps. Even if you bought it in an indie bookstore to go onto Amazon, you can give it a five-star review. Oh, it's very, very helpful. It is. Um, so everybody do that. Um, someone just wrote, I'm ordering right now. Okay. It's great. Oh. Perfect. Do that. <laughs> um, and and yeah, so so that's really helpful. But the, so, can you give us again insight into how this new book was conceived, and um, why did you feel like you had to write it, and in what order? Because again, what I like about the, your new Jungle O Decorate Wild is you have a lot of your own. It's sort of like your own insights um, about the world, um, so you know people get to know you. But of course, a lot of uh, beauty, um, a lot of practical tips. And so how did you know what, how you wanted to make the formula for each chapter? Um, outlining was probably like took almost as long as writing the book itself. So um, the way that I like to outline and it helps me think about what I want to say and helps me synthesize my ideas and thoughts into really um, immediate understandable language. So that was something that 
um, I, I spent a lot of time on even before getting the book deal. Sort of, I wanted to have a really clear idea of what this was going to be about, what the overarching concept was going to be, what words were going to be powerful words throughout this book. So for this book, there are powerful words like the word wild, and we use that word um, to mean lots of different things throughout the book because I think it's such an incredible word that um, hits on so many things that my design sensibility and my my world view um, and personal ethos hit on. So the idea of sort of breaking free of convention has that sort of wild feeling. Um, the idea of decorating wild, like decorating with lots of color and pattern, and then wild as in um, the the connection to the natural world. So all of these things. Things, um, really play into what the book is about. And so I spent a long time, even just with that word. So trying to think of like, okay, wild style, wild child, wildfire, you know, and, and working and, and I do a lot of mind maps as well. So, you know, I'll start with sort of the nucleus of the idea. So jungle -o decorate wild. And then I'll say, okay, what is the jungle? -o? What is it all about? Then I'll write a bubble and it'll say color pattern, plants, um, family, tradition, cultural heritage, travel, and just really kind of brainstorm out these ideas. And I, and I pull these bubbles out as far as I can go so that I then have just this sort of brain dump of all the different things that this could be. And then I start massaging and synthesizing and editing and sanding until I have a really clean, clear outline. And then comes the fun part where you really get to um, color in the lines and color in the lines with language and thoughts and 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 by having a really clear outline sort of not just what the table of contents is going to be but also each beat within each chapter it just then makes it quite easy to write because you 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 give yourself a guide to say oh okay now i know i'm going to write about this and then i can sit down for a few hours and sort of fill in that that one section but i'm very disciplined and um, I'm a very hard worker and I'm also just really passionate about what I do. And so um, when I was writing this book, it just sort of once I had that outline, which was really the hardest part of sort of figuring out exactly what each beat was going to be. But then after that, it's like poetry and it just kind of flows out of me. Well, I, another question I'm getting is just you seem again, you're you sort of exude creativity. And so a lot of people are feeling um, stuck. And so this one woman is asking, you know, when you're stuck, is there a first step that you would recommend yeah. someone? Doing? Yeah. So when I'm stuck, I go outside. And I think that's really important. Um, I think there's, there's so much of us that, that we okay. expect, um, we expect our creativity to um, hit us as opposed for us kind of going out to find it. So I think going outside is a huge easy thing that we can do, um, especially if there is some amount of nature. I mean, I live really close to the LA River. It's not the Colorado River, but um, it's something. I can go and see birds, see water. I can see the changing colors of the trees. I can pay attention to the little seed pods and the way the buds are starting to burst. There's these tiny moments that once you start to plug into them and you put your phone away and you just let yourself experience the world around you. For me, even if then right away, you don't necessarily, something doesn't necessarily click and you're like, oh, I, I'm creative now. You, you, you allow yourself to um, create a little mental space so that when you are ready, those ideas can flow through you. Um, so I definitely think when you're feeling stuck, put down your phone, we get, get out from behind your computer and go outside and get into nature. Um, I love a botanical garden. Uh, I love even just a local nursery. I think just communing with nature and being, being, um, being with plants, being, being with an open sky and the sunshine, it's just cleansing and it can, it's amazing how it can kind of clear the slate so that the creativity can flow again. I think that's such a really amazing advice. And I, you also said something I think was also important, which is pay attention. So you said part of it is if you're outside, but you're still on your phone or if you're still walking down, which sometimes I will do and I will literally trip over the curb. And I'll be like, this is so embarrassing. <laughs> I just, I've been like walking outside like this, taking your advice, but not, not really. So the idea of paying attention to those 
clues, but not necessarily knowing what they are. I think that's such a beautiful um, way to, to look at creativity. And so that's, so building up a question to that, that I love to ask that I've asked you, um, can, what does creativity mean to you? And then we'll get into some more, I'm getting lots of questions from both places. So <laughs> what, I want to ask you a question because yeah. you answered this for me as I was writing my second book around uh, women and the intersection between their happiness, their creativity and their identity. Mm-hmm. And you got to talk to me about um, some really beautiful things around what creativity means to you. Yeah, you might get a totally different answer now because I don't remember what I said then, but. Uh... <laughs> I, I doubt it, I doubt it. Um, but creativity for me is is about what's, what what you have on the inside putting it out, putting it out on the outside. And, you know, the first chapter in my book is called Magic in the Mix. And um, I, I come from a very mixed family. I'm, I'm mixed with black and Jewish. And I grew up with a very uh, multicultural, crazy sort of mixed household. You know, everything was a fusion of, of lots of different cultures, religions, um, colors, et cetera, et cetera. And, and so for me, um, what sort of became clear as, you know, I get deeper and deeper into being a designer and an artist is that everything is, is a remix, right? So there, the idea of creativity, um, I think is a little bit, um, it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't pay homage to um, history and and community because there's sort of this like false sense that you create something from nothing. And Mm -hmm. and, and that's not true. We create, we we mix different ideas that we've gleaned along the way um, our whole lives. So I think oftentimes it feels like magic because when you're drawing or painting, it feels like you know, something that is just coming out of you and, and it is, but it is also coming out of every painting you've ever seen and, and every story you've ever heard. Um, and so I think in, in sort of honoring the mix, honoring the mix that you have, um, whether that's your upbringing or, or, or an artist or a designer that's inspired you or a writer who lights you up or, or whoever that is, you're sort of incorporating little things here and there and mixing them all together to synthesize something new and different and that's creativity and so it is about not just what you're creating but who you are and how you're bringing that into the world and your personal spices and flavors that you're putting on top of this remixed creative smoothie right that's sort of a a, a, an amalgamation of all these stories and experiences that you've had throughout the course of your life well I think that's I, I wrote a whole chapter based on your um uh, your beautiful insight. I even put a little mixtape and uh, homage to you. And, uh, and of course you're featured <laughs> very prominently in my second book, because I think that that insight around the remix is not only so profound and important, but it actually helps us to recenter everything that's wrong in America. <laughs> mm-hmm. And, and I, I don't say that lightly. Um, I say that, you know, after a pandemic where we've recognized that we are all interconnected, where we're recognized that somebody, somebody sick in India has an effect on us here, um, where we um, have had this individualistic nature that somehow we're supposed to raise our kids on our own or right. take care of right. ourselves. Whereas the entire world, like you said, is a remix. Um, we are building upon others. And so I think your love of community and your recognition of creativity in the context of community is actually revolutionary because I think for, for my whole life, you know, what I've been sold a bill of goods on was that I had to do everything alone and that somehow I had to come up with everything alone without recognizing that everything we do is, is like you said, is not only remixed, but built upon others. And that is good. So I really, again, you're very inspirational to me, as you know, in so many different ways. Um, But that particularly was, such a key and important insight that I started to see in so many different creative people. Once you and I talked, it sort of unleashed, oh, everyone's remixing and I see it here and I see it here. And you'll see it in your own creative journey. I'll say that to our audience. And so again, thank you for inspiring me in that way. And so Candice asked you, um, and again, I'm, like I said, I'm getting, I'm getting questions from two different, so you I may hear it. the ping because I didn't put Dean not disturbed. So I'm getting. Oh good. I, I thought it was me. I'm glad, I'm glad it's your no, ping. No. So, sorry, I need to figure out how to get <laughs> no, the sound off. 
<laughs> but uh, but the fair play team is texting me questions while I'm getting questions in the chat. So it's a little <laughs> confusing how to um, decide which ones to pick. But I think we should honor the female quotient audience, of course. And so let's go with Candace's before we go to the text ones. Um, as an entrepreneur, how do you hold yourself accountable day to day while maintaining your creativity? That's a great question. So do you have certain days where you're just like, I'm wild and I'm going to go for it. And other days where you're like, I'm marking up business contracts for my uh, relationship with Pottery Barn or, or is it more um, a mix, a, re a mix of your day or, or how intentional is it? I guess that's a good question. So I have two practices that are very important to me. The first is um, creative warmups. So I spend at least 15 minutes every day and 15 minutes doesn't sound like much and it, it actually isn't much, but it's amazing what 15 minutes of just doing handwork does for me. And I don't um, put a box around what that is. I like to play. So it could be that I'm doing a collage. It could be that I'm doing drawing. It could be just that I'm doodling. It could be that I'm painting. It, it could be anything. Um, but I make sure that for at least 15 minutes every single day, I do something creative that's not in front of a screen. Um, and it could even be playing music. Um, I play the guitar and sing. So it's just like, it needs to be. <laughs> 15 minutes. It's like that, that it's like a sacred 15 minutes for me. And then sometimes if I'm in a groove, I allow myself to do it a little more, um, or a lot more, you know, but I, I think having a practice like that, it's amazing where it can take you. So many of my wallpaper designs, so many of my, um, paintings started with this 15 minutes. And if you regimen it, just like you do your yoga practice or your uh, beauty routine or, or any of these things that you might hold sacred and do on a daily basis, um, it's really incredible how just, just that practice of, of doing something creative off the screen every single day will spark new ideas. So that's number one. Number two is I allow myself to, quote, indulge in moments of inspiration. And what that means for me is that if I'm on a phone call, if I'm in the middle of a meeting, um, if I'm at dinner and I have an idea that I really feel like I need to get down, I let myself do that. And that's important to me because you never really know when inspiration is going to strike and mm -hmm. it's, it comes and goes quickly sometimes. And so sometimes I might have an idea or something that I want to try out, but I'm in the middle of something else. And so I don't honor it. And then I kind of forget it. And then it's like gone. And so indulging myself in those moments, it could be in the middle of the night that happens to me quite often. And so in the middle of the night, if I wake up and I have something, I get up and I jot it down or, or I do what I need to do to hold, to hold on to it. Um, and so those two practices for me are, are really, really important. The other thing is that um, I don't work on weekends. And that is something that, you know, started mostly because of my daughter and just making sure that, you know, I'm carving out time and space to have really, really good one on one time with her. Um, but what has happened and continues to happen is that that's kind of our creative time and we play and we make art and we do things creative together. So I do get um, between the 15 minutes every day, the indulging moments of inspiration and sort of the creative crafting art projects and things like that, that I do with my daughter on the weekends. Um, it allows me space to uh, grow creatively, which is, I think what, what we all need. Wow. Okay. Did everybody hear that? That's a roadmap to creativity. And ironically, I bet you, because you're not working on weekends, like you said, I mean, that's that diffuse thinking you're talking about, uh, where you may not be saying I'm here to be inspired, but you're giving yourself a brain break. And exactly. actually the science shows that that's really important for creativity. I learned that uh, when I was writing the second book, um, how important that diffuse thinking time is. So uh, everything you're saying is backed up with uh, neuroscience as well. So oh, I good. Really, <laughs> um, so the, the tech that you're hearing are questions coming in. Um, one of them, I think, is an important question, which is, what's the hardest thing for you about being an entrepreneur? Um, the, the people stuff <laughs> with my team. I mean, I love my team and I have an incredible team, but we're growing quickly. And so just managing the growth and um, and the interpersonal relationships for me is challenging. I'm very conflict averse. 
I'm also um, averse to hierarchical structures. Um, I sort of value every person on my team so much that I resist um, creating higher hierarchies within the business. But as we grow, it sort of feels inevitable in, in some ways. So um, those are things that I really struggle with, um, you know, being the CEO of, of, of my own company right now when I'm truly an artist and a creative. And so um, that's something I'm kind of trying to solve for right now. Do you believe that having a good team around you is the key? Um, you know, what would you say has been the sort of the big key to your growth? Like having people that complement your skills, um, having an intentional plan of where you want to go, the diversification, uh, because as entrepreneurs, you know, as all of us, um, we have a certain skill set. And I think that's how we end up building our audience or um, our product. And then how do you fill in those other gaps? Yeah, so I, I think it's been challenging for me because I, I came from um, a place where I was used to kind of pushing things forward on my own in every arena. So there has been some amount of like letting go that I've need that I've needed to do and um, trusting in other people. And now what I really look for is people, yes, like you said, to fill in my gaps. So we need the yin and the yang. I need people who um, love structure and are really good at building systems to counterbalance my hippie, organic, we're no hierarchy kinds of um kinds of things because ultimately we are a for-profit business. We are scaling. Um, so I, I need people who have um, experience and actually also um, people who just love and get off on that kind of stuff the way I love and get off on the creative side. So, um, so we're building that out right now, but um, you know, I've been doing this for 12 years now. So um, we're now at the point where I have, I have 10 people on my team, 10 full-time people, and then lots of sort of freelancers and things that, um, that work with us as well. But we're really at that point now where it's like, you know, up until now, we sort of were able to get away with everybody just kind of doing their thing and, and you know, it being this sort of non-hierarchical um kind of creative, fun, exuberant place, which hopefully we hold on to that culture, but we have to put more systems in place in order for uh, new people as they come in to understand sort of how to fit. And um, and that just happens, I think, inevitably with, with growth of a business. So it, there's a lot of letting go that I'm doing right now mm -hmm. um, to be able to, um, to nourish Jungalo the way it needs to be nourished. And another question is, what are you most excited for on the horizon? And then I have some fun questions actually about practical stuff, like where you can find, uh, can someone ship to Germany, your online store, where can you find yes. it? International shipping, jungalo.com. Okay, so yeah, jungalo.com. Uh, yes, in Germany, it goes there. Yeah, um, ich kann auch Deutsch sprechen. <laughs> oh, amazing. So, uh, that's why we do this early, by the way, because we do get... Um, we get an international audience and afterwards oh, wow. um, too, which is cool. Um, and so that's great to know, but uh, I thought that was a nice question. What's next for you? So keep your eyes peeled to our Jungalo account and the Justina Blakeney Instagram account on Monday. Ooh, so exciting. today's Friday, yeah. Monday's Monday. We have a really huge announcement um, coming. So um Okay, That's yeah, we'll just keep it, we'll keep it silent. <laughs> so if you want to know what's next, go to follow Jungalo and Justina Blakeney because, and you should anyway. Okay, so someone's getting mad at me because I haven't asked you for any <laughs> actual decorating tips. Um, okay, so we have four, we have, again, this is the female quotient. So we do, we, we, center, entrepreneur, we center entrepreneurship, but um, I'm getting anger from, uh, on the text. Uh, and they said, can you please end with some, actual fun decorating tips. So uh, let's do that. Let's spend our last five minutes, if you wouldn't mind. Sure. Um, sure. Again, so just to recap, for those of you who are listening later, can you show your book one more time? Because yes. this is a recording. We get most of our listeners, um, watchers on recording. Okay, and great. I can actually show you the other cover too, because underneath this. Oh my God, we wow. Got this. <laughs> that is, beautiful. is that your art? 
It is my art. Yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> See, again, you are uh, if so, like, there's just a, another layer to peel always when I talk to you. I did not know <laughs> you were also saying. Um, uh, so that, so yes, yeah, so we have five minutes to go into jungle o decorate wild. Um, can you give us like your top three tips? Um, if you could think about, I know that's hard, but if, or just throw out remix three tips, just top of your head, uh, what people could do today besides going on jungle.com because there's some amazing things there. Uh, and when I'm just like tired, that's my diffuse thinking. Sometimes I'll just go and scroll, uh, all of the stuff you, um, have created, but um, just three things like would it be taking a wall and adding some wallpaper or you know anything you could tell us just three practical things that maybe people could think about if they want to really start uh, you know making their home more um, more, more wild or more, breaking free from convention yeah okay so I think experimentation when it comes to design and decor is key. And there is sort of, if anyone tells you that they can walk into a space and just sort of snap their fingers and understand what the best flow is of the space and, and the best scale for furniture and, and all that stuff, it's, it's, it's not true. I mean, you know, maybe the top 0.5% of folks can do that. But ultimately, in order to create a space that really works for you and your family and supports your goals and dreams, you have to experiment. And experimenting is fun. You can do it with your whole family and it's amazing what you can discover. So there are certain activities that I always like to suggest people try. Um, and moving around furniture, just like maybe, I don't know, when I was a kid, I loved to move furniture around and just like change things up. Thinking of everything as material, thinking of spaces as what they are, spaces, um, take, getting rid of like the prescribed ideas like, oh, this is my dining room, this is my bedroom, this is my office, and sort of thinking about your space in a whole new way. Because maybe, for example, you've been sleeping in the room that either the architect of the place or the last owner of the home or the last person who rented or whatever it is um, said this was the bedroom. And so you said it was the bedroom, but what if you're, you actually sleep much better in the room that you've earmarked for the office or the guest room or something like that. So allowing yourself to experiment in your home and figuring out what spaces best facilitate which activities you want to have. So one thing I recommend doing is creating lists of all the different activities you like to do in your house. Do you like to do puzzles? Well, where do you do your puzzles? Where would you like to do it? Do you like to work from home? Do you want to be creative? Where's your creative space at home? Carving out different areas of your home for different activities Activities helps manifest those intentions that you might have. So it might be that you don't, you're not as creative as you want to be because you haven't actually created space in your life for that creativity. Mm -hmm. Where is your creative hub in your home? Where is your relaxation hub? Where is your romantic hub? Where is your self-care hub? So kind of creating a list of different ways you want to use your home. How do you want to grow into your home? How do you want to relate with your family in your home? What do you wish you did more together? Do you only commune around a TV? Is that what you want? If that's what you want, gravy, like great, then that should be the focal point of your living room. But if that's not what you want, then you should be thinking about different ways to organize your life. And so allowing yourself to really think about the activities that you want your home to facilitate and then allowing yourself to just try moving some furniture around. Try it for a week. What does it cost? Absolutely nothing. Try switching your sofa to the view of a different window. Try, you know, really try experimenting and it's incredible what you can find. And the same thing goes for paint colors. I think, you know, white is a default paint color right now. Um, and white can be great. It's easy, it sort of goes with everything. But what if, what if you painted your house teal? What if you did that? What would happen? How would your life change? How would you feel differently when you woke up in the when you wake up in the morning? So allowing yourself to break free of the confines of convention. I feel like people are like, oh, but I can't paint. You know, it's like, well, why not? <laughs> you can always paint it back if you end up not liking it. You know, these are little things you can do 
that may or may not have a huge and profound effect on not just what your home looks like, but how it feels like and how you actually live in your home. So that's a big, that's a big one, but this idea, and it just ties into this idea of like breaking free from the confines of convention, right? Like maybe you don't need a formal dining room and maybe that space should be your gym or maybe that space should be your creative hub. Like whatever that is for you, just not necessarily thinking this has to be what's prescribed. And that I think is sort of the most fundamental thing that people don't necessarily think about when they're decorating their home. And it's just, it's so important because your home can support your dreams and your growth. And that's what we're all trying to do here, right? Well, I think again, what a beautiful message to end on that our home can support our dreams um, when we've been living. Many of us have been working where we're living and living where we're working and coming out of um, a time where so many people are like, we hate our homes or we want to break free or get out. But looking at your home as an um, experiment is something that I will encourage people to do that I started to do uh, after speaking with you. Uh, in fact, my son loves to use our dining room uh, for a lot of his creative stuff. And I was sort of panicking. So I was like, that's where we're supposed to eat like formal food. And I was like, Justina would say like, this is a place where he's gravitating towards that feels creative to him. So why can't this table be a creative space where we could do puzzles, where we could um, let him do his you TikTok dances or whatever. So um, I took inspiration from you there. I wanna thank you again for your time. We know it's very valuable. And um, so like, again, I wish I could have answered all the different more questions that were coming in, but uh, everybody, if you can't get enough of Justina like I can't, then follow. I can't wait to see what happens on Monday. It's going to be exciting. Yes. So Jungle have a great wild. weekend. Thank Everybody you. buy <laughs> Jungle Oak Decorate Wild. And like I said, if what's really helpful to authors, even if you buy it, like I said, from any retailer, it's still very helpful to go on Amazon and just it's the easiest thing to do and the biggest gift just to click five stars. Um, and um and we cannot wait to see what you're doing next. Thank you so much. This has been so much fun. I just love talking yeah, about you. It's so <laughs> fun. I can't wait to see you again. So I'll, I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Thank you. All Thank right. you all. Bye. Okay. Bye.